Welcome to our mastering tutorial. Mastering is a very extensive subject. It's not as much a science as it is about experience and feelings. But if we've got to capture the essentials of mastering, I would describe it like this. After we finish mixing and exporting our project to a single stereo track, what we've done is combine sound waves from different tracks to create a new sound wave. And maybe we've ended up with some unexpected spikes, for example. So basically, when we master, we've got to put some final touches before releasing our work. We may want to tweak the EQ and panning, add compression, limiting, dithering, and applying final reverb to the entire mix. Limiters let you increase the overall volume, but when applied too much, they do hurt the dynamics. Compressors let you increase the overall volume, fix spikes, and at the same time, preserve dynamics. Reverb, when applied to your entire mix, will have a different effect than when applied to the individual tracks in your submix. Some minor EQ correction is usually needed as well. Panning and volume maximizing are usually needed. It's important that all the mixes sound like they belong to one CD. Or in other words, watch out for your consistency in loudness and dynamics. It doesn't mean that everything on the CD has to be equally loud. But there should be some consistency. In the last slot, insert a dithering plugin. By the way, always export your final mix with the highest bit depth and sampling rate. In other words, if your project is 24 bit depth and has a 96 kHz sampling rate, export it in 24 bit depth with the 96 kHz sample rate. Just apply the dithering process in the mastering. By the way, don't use MP3 and other compressed file formats as a file source for the mastering. Trim your songs and apply fade in and fade out if needed. What we're definitely not doing here is remixing the songs. If you feel like you need a good remix, go back to the project and remix it there. You will go back and forth a few times anyways. Don't use headphones. Even really good ones won't give you an accurate picture. It's also a good idea to test your product on some average speakers and in different environments to see how it sounds. Because of course, people are going to listen to your work in their cars, on their boom boxes, and so on. But the high quality sound equipment is definitely going to help you find questionable spots. Use a few reference CDs. Use professionally recorded CDs of the same type of music that your CD has and compare how it sounds against your CD. After you finish, give it a rest for a day or two. Listen to it again afterwards. Most likely, you'll find some new angle and what yesterday sounded good might be a little different today. A few words on burning to CD. The audio CD format was created by Philips and Sony in the early 1980s.
It used to be a very specialized field. But today, CD burning software and hardware is widely available. Cubase, however, doesn't have a CD creating capability. But even free CD burning software will be sufficient if you're just burning your CDs for your friends or your relatives. You can use Nero, Roxio. One of these might even come with your CD or DVD ROM burner. If you need a professional standard CD, you can use CD Architect from Sonic Foundry or Waves Lab from Steinberg. Obviously, the last two products will give you many more options. And this concludes our mastering tutorial.